Hello again, this is George Crump at Kansas City, Kansas Community College in the Technical Education Center, and I am the Electrical Technology Instructor. Today I'm going to be speaking to you about motors as it relates to residential motors in your home. And to begin with, I'm going to start talking about the, the various types of motors in your home. First of all, motors are generally classified with a horsepower rating, and one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. And the watts is generally what uses the energy, and that's what you pay as it relates to your electric bill, how many kilowatt hours. The motors that I'm going to speak about, I have three here on the table, and they're all classified in different types of classifications. This particular motor on the end right here is a induction motor. And I can tell you in your home, all the motors will be single phase, either 120 volts or 240 volts as it relates to the voltage for the motors. Some motors by chance do have a dual voltage rating. And by that, I mean it can operate on 120 volts or it can operate on 240 volts. This one on the very end that I have my hand on is a motor that has a dual voltage in it. This is an induction motor, which means that when the electrical energy comes into the motor, it creates a magnetic field which induces the voltage to cause the motor to rotate. And then the motor is basically an electrical mechanical device, meaning that it takes electrical energy for its source of power and that electrical energy that the motor is using is converted into mechanical power, which is what is hooked up to the shaft of the motor. Okay. Some motors operate in a clockwise direction, which would be the same way as a clock rotate, and some operate in a counterclockwise direction. And there are some indications on the motor nameplate that will tell you the directional of uh, the motor in terms of whether you want it clockwise, which is CW, or counterclockwise, which is CCW. And you'll see that on the nameplate on the motor when it comes with the instructions from the factory and also here on the nomenclature. This motor, as I said earlier, is an induction motor, single phase with dual voltage. The next motor over here in the center is a 120 volt motor and it has a cord and plug. Whenever you hear that term cord and plug, that means the motor is plugged into a 120 volt source with this three prong plug. This particular motor is called a split phase motor. And by split phase, that means when the motor starts up, it starts up by the current flowing through the start winding. And then if, when it gets up to speed in the start winding, it has a centrifugal switch that allows it to convert to the run winding. So it starts up at the start and then goes to the run, which is called a split phase motor. It is cord and plug connected. The next motor over here on the very end, this motor is called a capacitor start AC motor. And the capacitor start is there because sometimes the motor gets under a, a, a load that it has to start up against. And by being up against a heavy load, this motor has a capacitor that stores energy to give it that additional push to get the motor running up to the constant speed that it needs to do the work. So there you have the capacitor start motor. So going backwards again, we got the capacitor start motor here. We got the split phase motor here, which has a start winding and a run winding. And then you have the induction motor, which has a dual voltage, 120 or 240. Now, some of the problems that you have with motors as it relates to a, a fault, if you will, some motors will have bearings that are ball bearings, some will have sleeve bearings. The ball bearing motors are much more durable in terms of their lifespan and wear and tear than the sleeve bearing. The sleeve bearing is a little difficult for me to explain, but it's very, it's like a sleeve of metal that is on the shaft of the motor, the, on the two ends of the motor. And I must tell you that all motors have an inboard and an outboard. The inboard is the side of the motor that has the part of the motor that's connected to the shaft or the coupling that does the work. The outboard is the back side of the motor. 
Some motors also have, for example, in this motor, if you can see right there where my index finger is pointing, there is a area there for you to put oil in for this motor which has the sleeve type bearings. And these sleeve type bearings require a little bit of oil in there about every six months to a year depending on the use of the motor. And when you put the oil in there, you put that covering back over the opening where the oil goes in. And it's not just any oil, you want to use a heavy duty oil because of the type of work that these motors do. And then you want to put that cover back over to prevent any contaminants from getting down there into your bearings. When you get contaminants on the bearings, such as dirt or any other type of uh, metal that does not belong in there, it will cause the bearings to begin to deteriorate and then the motor will no longer be able to do the work that it's designed to do. Okay, the motor over on this end, which has the capacitor start, you can see the outboard, which is this portion of the motor connected here, and the inboard is over here. This one has bearings that are ball bearings, and you can't see the ball bearings because they're encased inside the motor ends over here on the outboard and the inboard portion of the motor. The one over here, which is the dual voltage motor, induction motor, it has ball bearings in it as well. And you can see as I rotate the shaft how easily it rotates. All three of them should have an easy rotation to them. This was a little more difficult to rotate. And due to the fact that it has that oil and it's a sleeve type bearing. And this one over here also is a little rough. The indication of how the bearing is doing the work is when you spin it like so, it should rotate rather easily when it's not connected to the load. If it doesn't spin easily, there's a possibility that you got a problem going on with your bearings inside the motor. Now, speaking of inside the motor, all three of these motors have what is called a stator and a rotor. The stator is the stationary magnetic field inside the rotor on the outer perimeter of the motor. All three of these have stators and all three of them have rotors. The rotor is what reacts to the magnetic field of the stator as the motor is being energized by the electrical energy, which causes it to rotate the stator. The stator in turn is hooked to your load on the motor, which does the work. The other things about motors is they're very dependable if they've been rated for full load duty or continuous duty. And continuous duty means that this motor has been designed to operate 24 hours a day, if need be, and last for a number of years. If it's a, a motor that has a full load rating on it, it will also have an amperage rating, which means that when you hook the motor up to your, to your circuit breaker panel, it has to be enough amperage supplying this motor to prevent it from overloading and causing it to break the circuit or open the circuit up. Those are the main characteristics of these three motors. There are a variety of other motors, but most of the time in your home, you'll either have a split phase motor or an induction motor or a capacitor start or a capacitor run motor. I hope that this information was helpful for you. And if you need to gather more information about motors, uh, there's a full load of a uh, class that deals with all motors that you use in your home as well as in your industrial and commercial applications. Thank you for your time and hope to see you soon.